Regardless of how well you know the content in the digital SAT math section, if you run out of time, you're not going to get your highest possible score. Let's talk about five ways you can save time in the math section. Tip number one is to use your geometry cheat sheet. I'm hanging out here, I'm taking my exam, and they're asking me about the volume of a circular cylinder. I don't know what the heck that is, but boom, click on reference, and the formula is right there. I just have to plug it in. So pi r squared times height. My diameter is 22, so my radius is 11, and it's going to be pi times 11 squared times the height, which is 6. You can grab Desmos here. Pi times 11 squared times 6. And we got this number that doesn't really work out, but you can see in all the answer choices, pi is a part of the answer. So we remove pi, and beautiful, we got 726. My next tip is to ignore most of the question. Anytime you have a question that is either a word problem or just has more than one sentence, go straight to the main question. So here we have basically which represents the x-intercept. And I'm focusing on these because the x-intercept of a, looks like a quadratic, the x-intercept, or I should say x-intercepts of a quadratic, uh, if it's upside down, which we can tell from the negative sign here, we're going to have something like this. And then it also says positive, so I, I probably should have circled that at first as well. Basically, we want to figure out what this spot represents. So I like to just kind of visualize what's going on. Then when we look at the rest of the problem, we can try to imagine what this actually looks like. So it says it's modeling the height of a projectile that has been launched vertically. So basically, this thing is flying up and then it's coming down. So the x-intercept would be when it hits the ground, right? D. Easy peasy. Let's look at one more example. This one is even a little bit longer, right? So I'm gonna go straight to the main question. What's the difference between the median percent, so median percent of residents who earned a bachelor's degree or higher for these seven states? Uh, we could see that there's seven states right here, so it's referring to the chart, compared to the median for all 50 states. Um, so, which we could assume is going to be in the question itself. So then we're cherry picking. It says median for all 50 states was 26.95, right? So we're going to compare it to that. Then to get our median, we can simply go through and eliminate the highest and the lowest. So 36 is the highest, 19 is the lowest, 35 is the new highest, 21 is the new lowest, 30 is the highest, 25 is the lowest. So we have 27. 9 minus 26.95. It would just be 1, but because of that extra 5, it's going to be 0 0.95. So our answer is B, just like that. And speaking of skipping most of the question, you can also just straight up skip questions, and that's going to help save you a lot of time. It doesn't matter if it's an easier question or a harder question. If it's something that you don't think you can solve quickly, skip it. So let's say I'm looking at this and I'm just like, oh man, I do not remember how roots work. I'm going to mark this for review, move on, get through some questions that I feel more comfortable with, and then I can always come back here and answer it at the end when I have time. Or this one, maybe I look at it, I'm thinking, oh, I could totally do this, but I feel like it's going to take me a while. Again, I'm going to mark it for review. I will move on and knock out some stuff that I think will be quick and easy. That way, those questions are not going to slow me down and keep me from having a chance to even attempt the ones that I know I'm going to get right. My next tip is to draw your geometry questions. Obviously, you want to use that cheat sheet, but you also want to draw the shapes. It might seem counterintuitive because drawing technically takes extra time. But in my experience, my students have had a lot more success with the clarity of seeing what's going on, and they actually get through geometry questions quicker when they make a drawing. So on this one, for example, these are similar triangles. How do we know? We've got a right angle that they share. We've got 58 degrees. 180 minus 58 minus 90 is going to be 32. So this leftover one has to be 32. They share the same angles, so they're similar. So rather than try to just mentally figure out what's going on here, I would flip this guy so that the straight side is on the right side. So this is going to be AC, AC. This is going to come down like this. And then what was C connected to? C was connected to B. And we've got our little right triangle here, right? And it's asking about BC over 
AB. So basically, bottom over hypotenuse, DF over DE. DF over DE. And just like that, we got our answer. And our last time-saving trick is to use Desmos. Utilize Desmos. If I've got a system of equations, for example, pull up Desmos. I'm going to plug in x equals 8, x plus 3y equals 26. It's asking for the value of y in my solution. Zoom out here, find my solution. The value of y is 6. And of course, this is just scratching the surface of what Desmos can do to help you save time.